Sony's been on a roll lately when it comes to their lineup of first party and exclusive titles, but one thing they've gotten a lot of flack for lately in this generation is their stance on crossplay and cross saves. As it stands, Sony is currently the only one of the big three who are unwilling to participate. When Rocket League tried to enable crossplay across all platforms, Nintendo and Microsoft were more than happy to collaborate. But Sony made the excuse that it's about looking after children within the PlayStation curated universe and protecting them from external influences. Then, with Fortnite, players discovered that if they linked their Epic Games account, where all their progress is stored, to PS4 at any point, that account would be permanently locked to PlayStation 4, PC, and mobile, with no way to undo what is essentially an eternal contract. Those who wanted to carry their progress over to Xbox and Switch would have to create a whole new account and start over. It was especially egregious that all of this happened without warning. Most players didn't know that their accounts would be taken hostage if they linked them to PS4, so it was all sort of an unpleasant surprise. Sony's response to all this, your standard boilerplate we're listening to feedback statement, that in no way, shape, or form address the issue. From there, we saw Nintendo and Microsoft team up through some friendly Twitter banter on Minecraft crossplay, and the two companies even partnered up to release a trailer embracing crossplay functionality, low key taunting Sony. Most recently, Todd Howard blamed Sony for Fallout 76's lack of crossplay by stating that the publisher wasn't being as helpful as Bethesda would like them to be. There is no denying that pressure against Sony on this front is mounting with every passing month and year, both from gamers and developers alike, especially as video games' online functionalities continue to mature. Which brings us to two days ago, August 11th, 2018, when Bethesda's VP of Marketing, Pete Hines, sat down with Game Informer to candidly discuss how crossplay restrictions are affecting their ability to fulfill certain gameplay experiences, particularly their card game, Elder Scrolls Legends. The interview began with Pete describing what Elder Scrolls Legends is, stating the following. The Elder Scrolls Legends is a strategy card game that encompasses both single and multiplayer. It is both cross-platform play and cross-platform progress. From there, Game Informer inquired for clarification on cross-play and cross-save, with them assuming that the feature would not apply to PlayStation 4, to which Pete had this to say. It is our intention in order for the game to come out, it has to be those things on any system. We cannot have a game that works one way across everything else except for on this one thing. The way the game works right now on Apple, Google, Steam, and Bethesda.net, it doesn't matter where you buy your stuff, if you play it on another platform, that stuff is there. It doesn't matter what platform you play on, you play against everyone else who is playing at that moment. There is no, oh, it's easier to control, or it has a better frame rate on this system. It's a strategy card game, it doesn't matter. So that's one interesting point he brings up about crossplay. It is worth noting that for some games, like competitive shooters, allowing cross platform play could be to its detriment due to varying performance and input methods. There's a reason why Overwatch on consoles is balanced differently from Overwatch on PC, and why those two experiences are kept separate. But, like Pete said, for other types of games, like a strategy card game, variations in frame rate and input methods make zero difference, so the balancing excuse has no part to play here. As for a game like Fortnite, a competitive game that keeps the experience across all platforms fairly unified, they mitigate balancing issues by making crossplay an optional parameter that can be controlled and toggled by the player. Obviously, it is up to developers to decide what they think is best for their game, but for those who do think they can find a way to implement crossplay without any negative impact, I just don't see much reason to restrict them from doing so. Now, on top of expressing Bethesda's intent to keep Elder Scrolls Legends unified across all platforms, Pete was adamant about stipulating that crossplay is a must for the game, stating, quote, We continue to talk to all of our platform partners, but those terms are essentially non-negotiable. We can't be talking about one version of Legends where you take your progress with you, and another version where you stay within that ecosystem, or it's walled off from everything else. That is counter to what the game has been about. Then, when it was pointed out that Sony didn't cave with Fortnite, despite it being the biggest game in the world right now, Pete concluded with, I'm aware, I'm just telling you that's our stance. This is our intent, and that is our message. Not specific to anyone in particular, but to everyone we're talking about. This is 100% clear. This is what we're doing, what we need, and what we intend. Do keep in mind that Pete never directly called out Sony, but given Sony is the only major platform blocking cross-play or cross-save, who this message is targeted towards should be pretty obvious. 
It looks like Bethesda is contemplating making a stance by potentially not releasing Elder Scrolls Legends on PS4, though nothing's official yet. Let's look at this from two sides. On the one hand, yeah, from a business standpoint, what Sony is doing makes total sense. They are dominating the console market right now, more people own PS4s than other current-gen consoles, and restricting cross-play means that people who might own an Xbox One or Switch, but not a PS4, will have to buy one to play with their friends, the majority of which are likely to own PS4s given the console sales volume. At the end of the day, that's all this is for Sony, a business decision. It's not about protecting kids, it's not about curating the experience or whatever, it's about making money. With that said, I think any company has to strive to strike a balance between what's business friendly and what's consumer friendly. Companies have to make money, of course, but those who are willing to incur some short-term losses to keep their consumer base happy for long-term viability are, I think, smarter and more forward-thinking. I mean, one could argue that EA continuing to push for paid loot boxes makes business sense, but we all know how much of a detriment it's been for video games as a medium. Loot boxes are what will ultimately make EA the most money, but the cost of that is, well, the quality and integrity of their games. Now, that isn't to say that Sony's stance on crossplay comes close to having the kind of negative impact EA's loot boxes have. But it's hard for me to defend Sony on this one just on the basis of, well, they're a business and they need to make money. Because that is the easiest cop-out for a practice that, when we get right down to it, is anti-consumer. I also don't believe in the notion that Sony enabling crossplay will be this huge boon for the competition. People tend to favor a platform for its unique games, and history has proven time and again that the console with the most extensive library of desirable, high-quality games will take the lead. Sony's already got that, so I don't see how enabling crossplay will in any way put a damper on the role they're currently on. Sure, it might mean the occasional Xbox or Nintendo player deciding not to buy a PS4 now that they can play with their friends in the comfort of their current platform. But all it takes to convert them is to launch a really compelling game that they cannot get on Xbox. At the end of the day, people buy consoles to play games, and when a game that is too amazing to resist comes along, and when it's backed up by a wide selection of other high-quality titles, they tend to buy the necessary console. All crossplay does is pave the way to keeping the gaming community unified in games where interconnectedness lies at the heart of the experience. And for those saying, well, I don't want to play with people on other platforms because it might throw matches off balance, guess what? Chances are you probably won't have to. Game developers will be able to give players the option to choose the crowd that they want to play with, like Fortnite does. And in the case of Elder Scrolls Legends or similar games to that, again, platform-wide balance is a moot point because it's a game that centers around strategy, not quick reflexes. Now, even if Sony's reluctance to enable crossplay doesn't affect them much in this instance, I can foresee it becoming a significant detriment in the not-so-distant future. They'll encourage developers who want to keep their games a unified experience to steer away from PlayStation, like Bethesda's insinuating they might do with Legends. Sure, some might argue that Elder Scrolls Legends won't be that big of a loss for Sony, but as more developers potentially take a similar stance down the line, it could have a wide-reaching domino effect. With the world becoming more interconnected through the power of the internet, as technology on that front continues to develop, I can assure you that these kinds of games that harness a feature like crossplay or cross-save will only become more popular and prominent in the coming few years. Trouble especially abounds in the next generation of consoles, when the race is reset. If Sony continues to stubbornly insist on blocking crossplay for PS5, It'll give prospective buyers and developers a reason to favor the competition's next-gen outings instead. Do you recall that a big part of why Xbox One had a crippling start was because of things like the initial DRM and game licensing model, which involved tying all game purchases to Xbox Live accounts and restricting the selling or borrowing of used games, and stipulations like how Kinect had to be plugged in all the time for Xbox One to function, as well as other things that made short-term business sense for Microsoft, but made no sense at all for the consumers. In the long term, Sony used all the stigma surrounding Xbox One's initial plans to their advantage and delivered a crippling blow during what was arguably one of the most legendary E3 press conferences. Not saying that it's a given crossplay restrictions will define whether Sony wins or loses the next console race, 
but it will at least have some negative impact on consumer and developers' perception, especially with crossplay becoming a bigger and bigger deal as the volume, popularity, and prominence of online-focused games continue to grow. Bottom line is, yes, Sony can do whatever they think makes business sense, but one has to wonder if their stubbornness on crossplay will be worth it in the long haul if this won't eventually come back to bite them in the ass as the long-term benefits of giving into the tide and enabling cross-play seem to outweigh the cost. But for now, Sony is the industry leader. They have no short-term incentive to yield, and the backlash against cross-play restrictions doesn't seem to have been disruptive enough for them to budge. It would seem as though, for now, Sony's strategy of winning out the storm through boilerplate PR statements has worked. How long they can go on while pressure continues to mount from gamers and developers, though, well, that remains to be seen. If you ask me, it seems inevitable that they'll eventually have to yield and adapt to the times as cross-play becomes more standard, but they probably intend to squeeze the most out of their position and stance as possible. Which, you know, isn't their prerogative, but when they're throwing around slogans like, this is for the players, and they go ahead and take a stance that's clearly for the business, well, you can imagine how to many that comes across as somewhat disingenuous. What are your thoughts on the matter? I'd love to hear what your take is on Pete Hines' recent statements pressuring Sony and Sony's insistence on restricting crossplay in the comments below. With that, I would like to end this news update. Thank you for tuning in. If you enjoy my content and would like to support this channel directly, consider donating on Patreon. And to be further updated on all things gaming news, reviews, and discussions, stay tuned right here on Yong Yeah. I'll see you guys next time. Yong out.